My name is Regina McKenzie. Um, I'm part of the Viliwano Euros. Um, here in the Ajumatna groups, we're made up of different, four different groups. I identify with Kuyani and Wanpu Yurina within Ajumatna, the four groups. Um, um, I've been working for the last 10 years out at um, Ukna, Water Roll, and out at Wallabadina. Um, we worked on a storyline that we've done from here from Hawker. That's actually 70 kilometres long. It goes from Hawker down to into the lake, Lake Torrens. Um, it's a Kuyani storyline, and um, the reason I um, love this area is that I grew, I've always come up here with my dad, and I was up here with my sister. And, you know, I've, I've got a really close connection with with the Wallabadina area. Um, it's a very significant site for women. Our two needs of seven sisters are there. So is um, so is the Willy Wagtail story. And also the emu and the um, curlew stories. Then you also got our, our law story, which is beautiful um, Mulgadevit that goes through there. And same as um, this is an area that um, Yulu walks through, which is the Kingfisher. When he's chasing the Akurus down from south in the Guyani way. Um, this area is a, also a, a place of trade. It's actually a, ma a main trade route from people coming up from the south ways to going up to Vukutu, um, Oka Mines. And um, it's something that's really, really important. Like it's a high density of archaeology out in the area shows how important this place was in the past to the Aboriginal people. And the thing is, is that we still occupy the land under occupation. We still go out there, we still hunt and gather, and we still do, all our children learn to swim out there. Um, every summer, we don't go into town to the pool, we go out to Auckland to swim. And um, there's, we still practice our bush medicines, we still practice our, our bush tuckers, we even still practice our languages and songs and dance to the area. And, we're actually at the moment, they've got a, um, a proposed site for a nuclear waste dump. They say it's low level, but it's also intermediate, which they always tend to forget about intermediate waste. It's all going to be stored above ground. Um, this is also the intermediate waste. The area that, we, that they, they've picked um, in 1955, 56 flood, all that area was underwater. So if there's another, if, there, if there's ever another flood that's the same as this last flood, it will affect um, what they're trying to build. But other than that, it's affecting our, our, our culture's stories, our storylines. We, we actually done a storyline which is called Pungo Porana, which is the first storyline that's ever been registered um, in its culture format um, anywhere in Australia under uh, we brought the Aboriginal culture into a non-Aboriginal people's way and we actually showed that we can actually um, register culture storylines as we see it, not as a non-Aboriginal person sees it. And that's the sweetness of the sea, but it's actually this waste that was going to affect that first storyline everywhere. The storyline is, a lot of people call them song lines, with us, when we've got the storylines, you've got specific places where you sing, and that's the, that's where the song lines come in. And um, the area where this waste dump is, is the part where you sing about about healing and about grief. That's this area is very significant to our family, and um, it also takes in the, the song and the story about the Artenis, how how they got up into the sky and stuff. The storyline goes across the lake to the other areas. It's a part of a big part. And this is what the government doesn't understand. It doesn't understand our impact, our belief systems. And what's really annoying is that the indigenous, the indigenous charter that they've done to the United Nations, they actually signed off. Um, the article 29.2 of it states they can't put waste in the area without first consulting the Aboriginal people, which didn't happen. And whether it be the 
whether it be the low, low intermediate waste or the high, high level waste. What non-Aboriginal people got to understand is that it's going to impact Aboriginal people on a deeper level, on a spiritual and, a, and our belief system is going to be under attack. You know, stop asking us to make these sacrifices. Because I think we've made enough sacrifices. We've made, made sacrifices with our people when they first came out, the, the genocide that happened to our people, the, um, what they did when the, the rape and the pillage of the Aboriginal people, then they stole the half-caste children, they stole the children. They still do it today, you know. They need to stop and think. We have rights too. We're not even part of their constitution. And then they talk about recognising us. We don't need recognition. We, they need to recognise that we are the first people and we are the ones who recognise them. They need to speak treaty. That's the thing that we, they must talk about is the treaty between the Aboriginal people. And um, what I say to this waste dump here in the Flinders Ranges, I say no to the waste dump in the Flinders Ranges. I say no to any waste dump in South Australia or Australia, full on. Because I know no matter where this waste dump goes, it's going to affect Aboriginal people and it's going to affect our belief systems.